On the 10th day of her scheduled 11-day visit to the Federal Republic, Queen Elizabeth arrived in West Berlin. Following an inspection of honored troops from the three allied armies and a West Berlin police unit, the British monarch, accompanied by her husband, Prince Philip, drove through West Berlin streets to a receptive welcome by West Berliners. Their motorcade also made a short pause at the wall. The Queen reiterated the willingness of her government and people to continue supporting Germany's desire for reunification. Queen Elizabeth spoke from the balcony of Schoenberg City Hall to thousands of Berliners who had gathered here at John F. Kennedy Square. I hope this one will be symbolic of a new chapter of understanding and cooperation between our two countries within the wider association of the free and equal nations of Europe. couple's last stop on the Germany tour was Hamburg. Following a tour of the city and the traditional floating tour of the harbor, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip were ceremoniously piped on board their yacht, the Britannia, by members of the West German Navy. On board that evening, the monarch gave a banquet in honor of Germany's president and chancellor. She noted that a trip to Germany was far more than just a moving personal experience. <laughs> Accompanied by a colorful display of lights along the Elbe River, the citizens of Free Hamburg gave the royal pair a memorable goodbye in behalf of every German citizen. President Heinrich Lübcke noted that the great warmth with which the royal couple was received throughout West Germany and West Berlin is an expression of Germany's desire to live in close friendship with the British nation. During a five-day working visit to the United States, Chancellor Ludwig Erhard was honored at Columbia University, where he was awarded an honorary Doctor of Laws degree. It indicates the university's astute realization of Chancellor Erhard's efforts to solidify and strengthen German-American relations. The predominant theme of the Chancellor's discussions with President Johnson was German reunification. Both men have agreed that working sessions of this type should take place on a regular basis in the future. This unusual view of Manhattan is the well-known work of artist Hermann Bollmann from Braunschweig. It is one of a series of 50 plastically designed pictorial maps which he has made of German and foreign cities since the end of the war. Bollmann studied cartography and he began this interesting series himself alone, drawing perspective from a pedestrian's eye view. He is assisted today by more than 25 employees and reams of technical equipment. His airplane carries three cameras of his own design, each of which takes one picture per second. These bird's eye views, thousands of them, then fit together something like a mosaic. The same area is then filmed again, this time from a moving car. The lens is connected to the speedometer so that the pictures are taken independent of changes in the car's speed, that is, at regular intervals of space instead of time. Bullmann made his first map in 1947, Braunschweig in ruins. The city today has been completely renovated. One of Braunschweig's many points of interest is the cabbage market. (laughs) 
St. Catherine's Church. Combining the ground and air photos on the drawing board gives us a dramatic three-dimensional picture of the building. pictures are checked side by side in a viewer and serve as a basis for the maps which are drawn by hand with a pencil. As Bowman explains it, we draw a city from above as it looks from the ground. The perspective is technically incorrect, but it looks right. Utilizing a reproduction device, the drawings are then reduced to map size and projected onto film. The film is developed in another one of Bowman's own designs. Names are then written in and streams, parks and so forth colored in. Although the cost of producing these maps is rather high, they are still well within the price range of anyone interested since most of the costs are covered by advertising. A 200-year-old barn in Lüneburg was renovated for around $5,000 into a convalescent home for old and sick horses. Burned out and rejected horses are taken in here, be they former racing stars or plow horses. The first inhabitants include a donkey, which belonged at one time to a traveling circus, and seven horses. The food which animal lovers provide for the animals is expensive. Upkeep at the animal center runs about $500 a month, supplied by private donors. A representative of the Humane Society adds, der Gnadenhof in Lüneburg ist der zweite seiner Art. The charity park is the second of its kind here. We hope that many more such refuges will be created in the Federal Republic. In the center of the Federal Republic, near the Rhine River, we find the Taunus, one of Germany's large subalpine mountain ranges. This 1,000-year-old town of Königstein, near Frankfurt, gets its name from the castle ruins which overlook the area. Königstein also boasts a modern high school, one of the 2,500 institutions of higher learning in the Federal Republic. The Taunus School is an auxiliary school, about 25% of the student body lives in Königstein, the majority arriving every morning from the surrounding area by bus. The sciences are strongly emphasized here. In the upper grades, containing the 17 to 19 year olds, the normal curriculum includes visits to and participation in work study groups. Modern instructional equipment is at their disposal. Biology courses, for example, are supplemented with a course in microphotography. Upper class students profit from their Latin teacher's hobby. After school, he conducts a cooking course in the school's modern kitchen. The students need bring only the necessary ingredients and about three tablespoons of good luck. Participating at this working session is a privilege reserved for graduating class members. Tonight's international menu features noodles Lothringer style. Some of the lower classes have founded an interest in physics group. Under the tutelage of one of Taunus's 40 teachers, the boys are building a computer capable of solving complicated mathematical problems. It consists exclusively of discarded parts.
While the upper class students keep busy in the metal shop, the middle classes comprised of 14 to 16 year old boys and girls are hard at work building artistic marionettes. A puppet theater, which the students made themselves, is located behind the blackboard in the art room. Performances by upperclassmen are painted from memory afterwards by the younger students. The town of school emphasizes sports, too. The large gym includes modern equipment, shower rooms, and a special training room for the girls. Instructions for the distaff side emphasizes dancing movements. Exercises from Orff's rhythmical training system is still another interesting aspect of the qualitative upbringing at Königstein School. Believe it or not, every single student, 600 of them all together, plays a musical instrument. We're on the Mosul River near Traben-Trabach, where the international elite among motorboat racers met to decide the world championships for the seventh time in a row. The festivities got underway with a water ski show. The highly tuned racing engines are limited to 350 cubic centimeters, but here in Europe, the size and design of the hydroplanes and the fuel they burn are not subject to any restrictions. In the finals, 17 drivers skitter eight times around the one-mile course. favorites, Switzerland's Otto Glückler, number 125, a European champ last year, and number 108, Peter Frisch from Austria. And the winner, Peter Frisch. Congratulations to the 1965 world champion in the B-class hydroplanes.